Hello, class. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to perform rotations in the coordinate plane. In our first example, we have a robot that's searching for a home in Vienna. And the path of the robot is modeled by this equation, y equals 3x minus 600. And it hears the loudest ping from the homing beacon at the point 400, 600. And it hears it from the southeast direction. So what we want to do is we want to model the situation on the Cartesian plane and shade the area that we believe that the robot should travel and define the homing beacon. So why don't you try to graph this line and shade the area you believe the robot should go in to find that beacon. So I used slope intercept form to graph my line. I used a scale of 50 on the x and y axis. So here's my y intercept down here up three to the right one, and here's the line. And here's 400, 600. And we know it's in the southeast direction, that homing beacon, so we shade that down to the right. Now the question is, how, where do we tell the robot to exactly go to find that homing beacon? In order to solve that problem, let's look at a similar situation. What if there's someone standing on a sidewalk and a car drives by with music playing? How can we model that using what we have in geometry? Well, we can model the path of the car with a segment or a line. And the person, the bystander, can just be a point. So where will the music sound the loudest to the person standing on the sidewalk? Where will that happen? Well, that'll be when the car is closest to the person on the sidewalk. And that happens when this segment makes a right angle with the path of the car. So it's the same situation here. If we can find the line that's perpendicular to the robot's path at our point 400, 600, we'll be able to find the homing beacon. So we need to figure out the slope of that perpendicular line because we have point slope form. And we already have a point that's going to be on that line 400, 600. So now the question is, how do we figure out the slope of that perpendicular line? Well, what was the slope of the original line? The equation was y equals 3x minus 600. So the original slope was 3. And what does that mean in the context of the problem? That means the robot was traveling north three units and to the right one unit. And we know that the line perpendicular to the robot's path forms a 90 degree angle with that path. How can we use that fact and the slope triangle to figure out where the perpendicular line is, what its slope is? Well, let's look at it. If we make a slope triangle, so a right triangle using two of the lattice points here, and the three and the one aren't actual lengths here. They're just representing the ratio of the sides, right? Up three to the right one. If we know that, how can we figure out the slope of a perpendicular line? And these, these circles represent the things from the homing beacon. Well, we know we can make a right angle here by performing a rotation. So let's do that. We rotate this triangle. 90 degrees, so we get perpendicular lines. And has the have, have the dimensions of the triangle been distorted anyway? No, it's a rotation. That's a rigid motion, so those aren't going to change. But what's the slope of this perpendicular line that we form with the hypotenuse of this rotated triangle? Well, now it's falling to the right, so slope's going to be negative. And now the change in y is 1. And the change in x is 3, so it's negative 1 third. So how is that related to the original slope? Well, the original slope was 3. And our perpendicular slope is negative 1 third. How are these numbers related? Well, they're negative reciprocals. Right? The reciprocal of 3 is 1 third. Multiply that by negative 1, and we get negative 1 third. And negative reciprocals have the property that when you multiply them, you end up with a product of negative 1. Right, because reciprocal is multiplied to 1, so negative reciprocal must give, us, must give us negative 1. So would that slope have changed if we rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise? No, the slope is still negative 1 third. Right, it's falling to the right, change in y is 1, change in x is 3. So how can we figure out the equation of that line? Well, we're going to use the point slope form, and we have that point from before, 400, 600. So what's the equation of that line going to be? In our point slope form, we it's of the form y minus the y-coordinate. That's going to be equal to the slope times the quantity x minus the x-coordinate. So this models the path that the robot should take to find the homing beacon. 
That was our goal. So let's look at a similar example. We want to make this segment, and we want to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise about the point reset, so one of the endpoints. So first, why don't you graph the points, and I'll show you my graph. So this has the same endpoints, 3, 7, 10, 1. We're going to do something like we did before. Going to make a right triangle using this segment as the hypotenuse. Let's see, we go from this endpoint and go straight down vertically and horizontally from there to the other endpoint. What are the lengths of the legs here? We have six and seven. And what's the slope of this segment of the hypotenuse? It's falling to the right, and the change in y was six, change in x is seven, so negative six sevenths. So if we do that rotation around the point 37, where will that end point be? So using what you know about slope in the Cartesian plane, why don't you try rotating 90 degrees clockwise about the point 37? Let's try that. I'll show you my solution. So like we did before, if we follow what we know about slope, we end up with this graph. So this time we went 6 to the left and 7 down. And that gives us the point negative 3, 0. So we're just using the negative reciprocal here. Instead of negative 6 sevenths like we had, we're going to use positive 7 sevenths. So remember, you can, the, when you have a positive slope, you can always think of it as moving up and to the right or to the left and down. Those are the same thing. So it was the slope of the rotated segment. We already said 7 sixths. Now, how is that related to the original slope? we saw that they're negative reciprocals. Their product is negative 1. Now, how could we use the slope of the perpendicular line to figure out where the rotated point is without actually using a graph? Well, we could have just modified the coordinates of our points. So instead of physically moving the point 7 down and 6 to the left, we could just subtract 7 from the y coordinate and 6 from the x-coordinate to get the same answer, negative 3, 0. Let's do the same. Let's perform the same type of rotation, but now let's go counterclockwise, 90 degrees counterclockwise. So where do you think the coordinates of that endpoint will be, using what we just learned in the previous example? So here's our graph. And hopefully you thought that you would get the point line 14. Now we're going right, uh, we're rotating this way. So now think about adding to each coordinate. You add 6 to the x-coordinate, you get 9. You add 7 to the y-coordinate, you get 14. So the point 9, 14. So now we have a more general case. So we just have a point A, B. How can we describe the location of that point after a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation about the origin? So if we did that, we end up with the point negative b comma a. Now what if we had gone clockwise about the origin? What would the coordinates of that point be? We had instead gone clockwise, we end up with the points B comma negative A. So what was the slope of the original line? And what was the slope of our perpendicular line? Well, the original was B over A and our new one, negative A over B. And what do you notice about these two slopes? Well, now we have variables, but that's okay. Still the same relationship that we had when we had uh, numbers for every variable. That they're negative reciprocals. Their product is negative 1. So what's the relationship between the slope of the line and the slope of the line perpendicular to it? They're negative reciprocals. Now can we predict the coordinates of a point that's rotated 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise? You can take the negative reciprocal to figure out the slope of the perpendicular line, and then use that to add or subtract 
from the coordinates. And how is the special true rotation about the origin? Well, we have this nifty formula. If we're going counterclockwise about the origin, the coordinates would be negative b a. If we're going clockwise, it would be b negative a. In this lesson, we learned how to perform rotations in the coordinate plane. Thank you for watching this video.